So last week you watched us do the washing and RV maintenance and I mentioned needing to do AC maintenance. Well, we're gonna try and do some of that today, this week. I started off by checking the returns inside to see how they look. Uh, we recorded some of the footage of the inside of the returns because a lot of times the returns will get squished. Uh, one of the things I like about what I saw on the Riverstone is that um, they actually put supports inside the channel of the return so it helps support that to where it can't collapse down and pinch the uh, return area and keep good airflow going there. So we checked that. We checked the AC vents for taping, whether or not we needed to tape anything. They looked pretty good. So our next step is to go up on the roof and we're gonna take the covers off the ACs real quick and take a look at the coils because we haven't looked at the coils. We've had the RV for eight months and it's time to give those things a look, maybe a quick cleaning, and uh, see if we get any improved AC. Now I did do what uh, is known as like a Delta T test where I use a thermometer and um, get a temperature in the return and get a temperature in the cold air side as well. And those numbers should be 11 to 20 degrees difference in temperature and that gives you indication that your AC is working well. Ours was 20 to 23 degrees difference in temperature uh, when that test was done. So I don't believe I have a real problem. I think I just, my big problem with why the temperatures in the RV goes up is I'm in wide open sun from morning until night, sunrise to sunset. So we're at least gonna take a look at things because it's been so long. Let's get started. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not good. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why they'd make a mess there, but we got a couple hornets in here. Um, with a nest and these ACs have been running non-stop it seems like for most of the time we've had the trailer but apparently there's a good spot where they're at now I'm gonna have a hard time of getting rid of them because I certainly don't want to use wasp and hornet spray because there's a, I don't want that necessarily to get down inside or damage anything so I might have to find a fly swatter and see what I can do with a fly swatter okay so changed my mind I'm gonna use the wasp killer spray instead because I remember this stuff kills on contact and I don't want to get stung and none of this air actually goes into the RV I uh, also brought up a rag so I can wipe it down real good after I spray um, the hardest part of course is just gonna be getting the right angle so I get both the wasp at the same time Looks like Alice is getting ready to set the camera up and run away. <laughs> you are correct. Just remind me not to go backwards because if I do, it's going to be a long way down. Gordon, do not go down backwards. Not flying. He's seen better days. Bye bye, sucker. Go down there with you, buddy. <laughs> all right, now to clean up all of this. Okay, so now that we got the wasp issue taken care of, at least on this one, we're going to do some cleanup. It's not as dirty or anything as I thought it might be. Um, bring the camera over here. So the wasp nest was attached here. And then if you look down here, can you see where I'm pointing? Yeah. Some leaves are piled up down there. And then there's this debris along the fins here and the seal. So we're gonna try and get rid of all this stuff. I don't think this is really causing much of a problem, but it shouldn't be there. So we're gonna get rid of it. And 
We'll use the cleaner. Where's the cap at? So, and we'll eventually we'll use this condenser coil cleaner to clean it. But what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with a cap. Is the cap has the spins on it, these little teeth, and those teeth will go right into. And you can see, I have my lovely assistant Ugh. come really close. Because what you'll see is you'll see as I brush up, even with it dry, you'll see it kicking stuff out. And we had a few bent fans that straightened those fans out. Some more bent fans right here. So we'll get those straightened out best we can. So you just see all that debris coming out. So we'll work on this and it shouldn't take long the hardest part which is a, in my opinion a design issue is so the cap is perfect for cleaning this but look at that i can't get all the way down to the bottom of these because of the way this is built and this doesn't come off i could potentially do something different but I think what I'll do for this is I'll clean everything I can and maybe get a vacuum cleaner or something else to get at it. I know I could use combs. I'll probably just use the spray. Get it, once I do as much cleaning as possible, then I'll use the spray. Um, that way maybe I'll use less spray. We'll see. First time. So I found that if I'm cautious, I can use to get this stuff that's on this foam off without having to just sit here and pick at it. The back side is definitely more dirty than the side is, huh? Yep. Notice on the back side there's more debris in here. So again, I'm sure it's choking it down just a little bit. So good reason to come up here and clean these. I would suggest probably cleaning. And from what I've seen on videos from the National RV Training Academy, the recommendation is at least every six months, unless of course you are in a very dusty, dirty area that, or in our case, we've been in areas with a lot of pollen um, and un right under kind of under a tree with this AC So a lot of this might just be pollen and stuff that's come out of the tree So hopefully me trimming the trees last week before washing the roof and then doing this will improve our uh, AC a little bit Or at least extend the life So you see all the garbage that's coming out as you're cleaning these that I mean I think I'm going to have to find a way to get down here though. I was thinking about maybe cutting the cap off and then being able to just hold it at the sides to where I can at least get it down in there to uh, scrub that out. So, right here. I don't have any more of this foam gasket that goes between the cover and here to keep the dirt and stuff from the inside. Um, Okay, so as we talked about, we've got bent fins on the front and the back from the installation. So we'll get those straightened out. And we also have quite a bit of sawdust in here. So we'll get that vacuumed out, get that out of there. And the other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is and bring your camera over here and, and point this way is I'm just going to kind of look to see how well they did taping off things which it seems like 
not a bad job because what happens is where this hole is is your feed for your AC that feeds all your vents inside and any leaks here causes problems because you don't get enough airflow and then any leaks here is leaking into your attic potentially which your attic is going to be kind of hot because it's under the sun and then you're dumping cold air in there that's a, poten a potential for moisture which is, means a potential for mold which we certainly don't want so we're going to take a look at all that stuff right now before we get too far Alex says I should talk about this guy <laughs> so the Dyson has been very helpful on this I don't have a shop vac although I do have one I can use but the Dyson works fine so the Dyson was able with this attachment to get down into the little crevices to do some dust cleaning and debris cleaning and we are Amazon affiliates if you don't know yet and you'll find this in our Amazon store there will be a link in the description to find that go down and find where it says show more right after the little description that you see there will be a thumb pointing down click that show more and then find the link to our Amazon page you can find this there it's great for cleaning the inside of the RV and good for a little bit of cleanup outside as well right back here is your hot air returns they come in and down in there is cold air that goes to the vents and then so this goes over that that's backwards turn it around ah. okay <laughs> so this goes over that. i'd have figured it out i uh, know eventually so <laughs> but that's what your assistant is for exactly. is to to guide you so it creates a seal you can see this channel where it sits on all this stuff that's why this was so clean on the inside except for the construction material when it was created and built. So we got that out and there was really no damage. There was a few dings like I thought from where they put it in. So we're gonna try not to recreate those dings by using a little bit of care as we set it in. Those fins are very sensitive. We're gonna get that on there. You gotta get it lined up just right. So that takes care of that plastic shroud. Now is the foil that goes over the top of that. Um, that helps retain cold air and again, a, just another layer of protection. Now I did have to cut the foam gasket to be able to get this off to where I could access this. And I used a razor knife to try and keep the cut as clean as possible to where it seals well. Just get that back over the top. Kind of get everything squished back together where I cut it. That looks pretty good. So now we're pretty much ready to put the cover back on and uh, close this one up because we're starting to lose the battle with temperature. We've been up here for an hour or so. Now it only takes this long because of recording. There's a lot of start and stop and all that to do recording stuff. Um, but I would probably give myself a couple hours to clean both of them anyway, just to take your time, do it easy. <sighs> All right, so we got up early today so we could play cover black stuff with white stuff. Um, so we've got two Max Air ceiling fans plus our two air conditioner covers. Um, I thought that it might be a good idea to cover the black because I did a measurement the other day on the inside of the RV just holding a thermometer up into the cavity of the ceiling fans. And I was getting a reading of 128 degrees. So we did a couple things. One, we ordered those pillows that you tuck in from the inside. But second, I said, you know, why black? Black absorbs heat, white repels heat. And I thought Flex Seal would be the best way to go with regards to retention on the plastic. So we're Flex Sealing all these black parts um, white to try and get an idea of whether it's going to help our air conditioners because our air conditioners have been struggling a little bit with the mid 90 degree full sun weather that we've been having 
Additionally, we bought a couple extra fans to circulate the air inside the RV more. So today's gonna be kind of, well, I'm gonna say the next week will be kind of a test phase because today's gonna be a little cloudy. So it's kind of hard to get an idea of whether it's gonna work or not if you got a cloudy day comparison to a full Sunday like what we had yesterday. So we'll see. So our ceiling fans do not have the rain sense technology on them because they have the big covers over them. Um, and that's what we're painting black. So if you have Max Air fans that have rain sense technology and don't have covers over them, you may not want to try this or you're gonna wanna find where the sensor is that way it knows when it closed the lid when it's raining because I'm sure if you paint over the sensor you're gonna make that portion of your fan inoperable so something to think about uh, with regards to this and if you decide to do it Ooh, look at my reflectix <laughs> so a lot of people use this stuff when it comes to trying to help um, their RVs when it comes to summer and keep the heat out um, one thing that we didn't want to do right now as a permanent fix is our um, skylight that's in the bathroom over the shower. We didn't necessarily want to paint that, um, although I kind of wanted to, but somebody else didn't. So we're going to use Reflectix on the outside because the way ours is designed, we've got the bubble that everybody has, but on the inside there's also a flat. So we're going to try and cover the bubble and stick it on the outside that way it also you know has the ability to repel the sun before any of it gets inside because if i go to the inside and cover that flat the gap between the flat and the bubble is still there and i'm just not sure with the sun coming in hitting reflectix that way what kind of moisture might build up in there because of the heat cold so i felt it's better to attack it from the outside and then reduce the options or possibilities of moisture getting in so we also have my camera assistant we're going to try these glue dots to adhere this to the bubble to keep the sun out and keep the heat out we might also use just a little bit of duct tape because every now and then we get a little bit of wind with some pouring down rain but i don't want to damage my lap sealant and i don't want to damage the bubble or the roof so we're just going to use just a little bit Voila, that is done. I still see stripes. On. Okay, so continuing with RV maintenance. Today's also a great day for us to change out our water filters. We have a clear source three stage water filter. Uh, we haven't changed the filter since we got it. And that was like December, so it's been seven months. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and change those out today. We finally got to a place where we could order them, get them in, and it's time to change them. So I'm gonna turn the water off. Watch this. Ooh, the water is now off. Aha. That's hard work. Hey, I was a little confused, believe it or not. It's surprising, right? Um, but the picture is what gives it away. Because I was trying to figure out how this actually works, but the picture shows clear source and ultra. So clear source and ultra. So that's how I know exactly which goes where. So we're gonna break these off and get them in. We do have to give a big thank you to our son, Craig, who purchased this for us for Christmas. So that was awesome. Ooh, well, All that's right. gross. So there's that one. And that's what it looks like when it's new. Oh my. So this is the five micron rust filter. So after six months of use, that's what it has filtered out. Um, so that's part of why you need something like this because if not that stuff is in your water now we don't necessarily drink the water out of the tap even with this clear source filter in we will make coffee with it or something but um, still do you want this stuff getting into your water heater and anything that uses water uh, potentially causing more problems down the line does that need to be washed in there the the bucket? How's the bucket look? No, it's clean. Oh, the bucket's clean. Look at that. Shows nothing. The filter's been doing all the work. Okay. So it's pretty simple. There is no right way or wrong way, upside down or not. It just goes in. There's a little post for it to sit on down in there. And you just get it back over here. 
it into position over here. 0.5 micron carbon or coconut shell carbon block filter. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see what the new one looks like. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a little dirty. You can see a little bit of a difference there. Not bad. But not too bad. All my older friends tell me mobility is key. So I try and do squats. You know. Getting your workout in too, right? huh? Getting a little bit of a workout in at the same time. Stay flexible. All right, so this is the virus guard filter. Okay, had to turn the camera off for a minute because some choice words were being said trying to get this plastic off of the virus guard. I'm guessing they have to use a different kind of plastic coating because it's virus guard, but man, was that a problem. It took me like five minutes to get it off of there and a few choice words, as I said. So anyway, now that it's off, so this is what it looks like side by side. So it's been doing quite a bit of cleaning. So again, just like the other ones, no specific way to go in. Just put that bad boy in there. All right. And if you didn't see my video I did on this clear source, go back to when we were in Texas. I talked about this when I was installing it and getting it set up. Now what I like to do is I mark in and I mark out on the top. That way I never had to sit here and wonder which way this thing needs to go. So we'll put her back in position. Those handy dandy quick connects. Quick connects are awesome by the way. water back on it's going to take a little bit to fill those chambers and uh, then we should have nice clean filtered water again I think we need to make a thing of iced tea today sounds like a plan it's gonna be hot Whew. all right so my last task for today for maintenance is gonna be taking care of my black and gray tanks getting those emptied rinsed flushed cleaned out and ready to go um, I'm not going to bore you with that process because I actually have a video I will link up there for you guys to take a look at. The video was done about a year ago, but I still pretty much do everything the exact same way. And we have never, in five and a half years of being in an RV, never had a problem with our black tanks. Check it out.